Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Phil and welcome to another Windows 98 tutorial. Previously on Phil's Computer Lab we had a look at configuring the MS-DOS mode super easy and we also had a look at installing Windows 98 on an SD card. In this video we're going to have a look at a tool that I use pretty much every time I uh, do a video review about a video card or when I set up a new machine and that tool is called PowerStrip. PowerStrip is shareware and I've got the versions 3.9, 3.2 and 2.78 on my website for downloading. So the idea is that I'm going to show you how I use PowerStrip most of the time. However, the program is feature packed. It might have features and functionality that go beyond what I use it for. The way you access PowerStrip is just by right clicking on that icon here in the tray. We've got access to performance, color, display and application profiles and under options there are preferences and some other interesting things. The first thing when I get a new, uh, let's uh, not new, but when I get a second hand used new graphics card from eBay for example and I put it in my machine, I install the drivers, the first thing I check in PowerStrip is actually performance profiles and then I click on configure and this shows me the clocks. Now I have ticked this box here, this usually has some decimal points so I tick that box just to make it a little bit easier to read and we can see this is the core clock. You can hover the mouse over anything and just press F1 and it will tell you a little bit more about it so this is quite uh, cool, it's like an in built in help system. It also tells you that the memory is DDR and this is very useful, a lot of cards, you're not quite sure if it's got SD RAM or DDR and this shows you what's going on here. This also explains the number, so the real clock speed is actually 166, however because it's using DDR memory the effective clock speed is double that, running at 333. The other interesting thing on this page are the driver options. By default, these are read-only, you can actually, you can't do anything here. However, you can untick this box and then you can change some driver settings. For a card like the NVIDIA GeForce 2 or an ATR Radeon, you really don't need PowerStrip to do that because the graphics drivers, they are really good, they have all these features built in. However, if you've got a Savage card, Savage 4 or something like that, um, the drivers are so minimalistic, there's nothing you can do. So uh, using a tool like PowerStrip is the only way you can actually disable or enable VSync. But regardless, I usually have a, a peek in here and see if there's anything interesting beyond what's in the drivers. Uh, usually with NVIDIA and ATI it's not the case. Another cool way that PowerStrip works, any changes here you can save that under a profile, a performance profile and you can then later link those profiles to specific executables. So if you're running uh, a certain benchmark or a certain game, you can then have an overclock kick in and as soon as you leave that game it goes back to the default clocks. If you want to reset your clocks, uh, maybe something goes wrong with the overclocking and benchmarking, you can just go performance profiles and then performance defaults. And this is one of the profiles I created earlier. The next area I usually inspect is under adapter information and that is basically checking the AGP speed. My motherboard can go up to 4x and the GeForce 2 runs at 4x but sometimes you might have issues with the AGP performance or with the AGP uh, fast write and you can actually overwrite these things here. So I'll show you what I mean. You can change this to uh, hang on, we're going to untick the read only and then you click uh, 2x and you press apply and the system would then uh, restart the machine and force the graphics card in AGP2 mode. Uh, and that can be useful if you've got a flaky motherboard and the chipset is not that flash and you have to uh, basically run it in a bit of, bit of a AGP compatibility mode so to speak. Also interesting is the diagnostic report. If you're on a forum and you've got issues with your video card or with your setup, you can just copy paste this form report and then put it in another program like uh, Write or WordPad and then post that information in the forums and then um, people that know a little bit more about these old computers, they can have a look at that and might be able to give you a clue. Let's have a quick look at an application profile, it's under here, under application profiles, configure and here you've got to find your application. So let's say 
I'm dealing with uh, Draken. You just find the executable and then you can attach any of these profiles. The only profile I've created was a performance profile, which is a 10% overclock and you just have to save that. And then whenever you run uh, Draken, it will overclock the video card by 10% and as soon as you uh, get out of the game, it will go back to stock clocks. And there are other DirectX and Windows tweaks you can apply here as well in case there's some compatibility issue going on with the game. Also very interesting are the hotkeys and they actually work within the game. I've configured a few, um, especially these two are quite in uh, interesting, increasing and decreasing the gamma, which basically a lot of Voodoo cards have the gamma set a little bit too high and then you can load in the game uh, without having to exit it. You can see straight away what it looks like. And you can also increase and decrease the clock speeds. So let's try that out by pressing Control alt and then 9 on my keyboard, I can actually boost up the clock speed and if I do Control alt and the uh, number 3 on my number pad, I can clock it down. And that works from within the game. So this is a really straightforward way of overclocking your card while you're running a benchmark or a game and kind of getting an idea of uh, where the stability ends. Okay, here we are in the game expandable and by holding down Control alt and then the minus or the plus keys on the number pad, we can configure the uh, gamma setting from within the game. So that's very useful, especially for 3D effects cards uh, where the gamma can be a little bit off, but also for older cards like the River 128. There are a couple of games where uh, the picture's too dark. And there's one more important keyboard shortcut and that one is the Control alt s This will restore the uh, defaults of the graphics adapter. So if you overclock too much, if you played around with custom resolution uh, and everything went haywire, just press Control alt s and it will reset the display adapter. Unfortunately, that means that the resolution is now back to 640 by 480 at 256 colors. So that just means you have to uh, readjust your resolution to the one that you want to use. Now let's have a look at some of the more interesting tweak options that you can do. For example, under monitor information, you can create your own monitor inf file basically. So um, you can just say write a custom monitor driver and you can give it your own manufacturer and model name and fill out all these details. So if you fancy seeing your name under settings and then uh, monitor up here. Hey, you can do that. Um, and you can also enter custom uh, resolutions and how, how high the refresh rate can go and so on. But the menu that most of you might be interested in is actually the one for custom resolutions, which is under display profiles and configure. And uh, there are some options here where you can unhide modes not supported. Um, and you can also lock the refresh rate across all the uh, resolutions, so you set it to 60 hertz and it will do 60 hertz on all the resolutions. But a lot more interesting uh, are these options over here. You can change resolution and refresh rate, but when you click on advanced timing options, this is where the fun begins. You can uh, basically position your image. This might not be of interest if you've got a, a normal monitor because you can just do the adjustments on the monitor. But for anyone who uses a capture card that doesn't have controls for positioning, this might be your only option to actually adjust um, the size of the picture. Um, you can also tweak the refresh rate here. This is all live. There's a button here, real-time adjustments. So you can just lower it a little bit. And uh, also for capturing, this might be interesting. If your capture card captures at uh, 59.9 something, then this might be better than running it at 60. You should get uh, less skips. And if you want to create your custom resolution, and a couple of people asked me how to do that, you click on the custom resolutions button. Have a look if there's a, a setting, a pre-applied setting that you can uh, use that works in your situation. Otherwise, you can just create one here. So let's say uh, you bought a 120 hertz monitor, like one of those BenQ gaming monitors, um, 4x3, and you can change the refresh rate over here to 120. And if I click add, it would actually test it out, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, if you've got a 120 hertz uh, monitor and for some reason you can't configure it in the normal Windows options, then check out 
uh, power strip and create a custom resolution. And a few other things I want to show you are under the default uh, preferences here. Uh, this is quite an inter interesting menu. It's an on-screen menu and by pressing Control alt o you can actually toggle it. However, I found that in games this is very glitchy. Sometimes it kind of glimps. Uh, you can see it through, through the game, sometimes appearing in uh, flashing, but in a lot of games it doesn't even show up at all. So for me this didn't really work that well. But the idea is, is quite good. And here you've got all sorts of other uh, default options that you can configure. And there you have it. That was a nice overview of PowerStrip. One thing I forgot to mention was the highlight of this program is that it supports many video cards, NVIDIA, ATI, but also 3DFX and Matrox and much more. So that makes this program quite special. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Click on that bell notification icon. Hit the like, dislike, or share button. And leave me a comment down below. What is your favorite Windows 98 tweak tool that you like to use? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video.